Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of September 20th, 2021. This week we got three topics and one of them is kind of a big one which we're going to start with and this is Hotel that is about to release two, possibly three new drones in the very near future. So we'll be talking about this with Haya from Drone Excel. The next story is kind of an interesting one, a kind of a head scratcher. We've talked about DJI for so many, uh, almost over a year now, uh, that the, the government cannot buy DJI, use DJI. Well, it looks like the Secret Service has been buying DJI drones. So uh, they have a little bit of a secret on their own side. And then we'll talk about a black box for drones. This is from a company called Fixar. And then lastly, we'll talk about a Pilot Institute update. We've hit some uh, pretty cool numbers, so we'll talk about that. Let's get started. And the first story this week is actually really exciting if you like new drones, because it looks like we have new drones on the horizon. And no, they are not DJI. I know we talk a lot about DJI on this channel, but this time we're talking about Hotel. And it looks like Hotel is getting ready really to release two, possibly three new drones. And uh, who better to be on the show to talk about new drones than Haya from Drone Excel? So, Haya, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Greg. How are you? Uh, doing great. Um, I'm, I, I love new drones. Whether uh, whether we buy them or not, I just love seeing new drones. So so this is exciting. This is Hotel. Uh, it looks like they have an event lined up and it looks like they have at least two drones, but you found possibly three. So tell us more. What's all the, the good news? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. I mean, uh, this started basically in the middle of this month uh, when we saw the first leaked photos uh, from Autel. Uh, over the summer, I had spoken with the, the new interim CEO, which is basically the old CEO, Gary DeLuca. Uh, he came back on board after Randall Warnes uh, suddenly left Autel Robotics. And he had already t uh, told me that there was going to be a Autel Mini drone on the horizon. Uh, asked me not to talk about it, so I didn't. Uh, but yeah, once these photos started leaking, uh, of course, we had to, uh, to cover that news. Uh, however, it's not just the Autel Mini Drone, which is officially going to be called the Autel Nano. Uh, there's also going to be a Autel Light Drone, which is uh, higher priced and, and it comes with uh, slightly better specs. Uh, basically competing with the DJI Air 2 and the Air 2S. Uh, so that's really exciting. Initially, of course, we only saw the leaked photos and rumors. There was one video actually shot by hotel employees where the guy uh, basically puts his hand in front of the camera as soon as we get a glimpse of these new drones, saying that we uh, we cannot publish that kind of information yet. So you kind of know it's coming. They're, they're teasing it and they're leaking it. However, um, this week and actually today, we saw an official announcement saying that the new hotel drones, two of them, uh, are going to be released uh, at 10 a.m. Shenzhen time in, uh, in China on September 28th. So really, I think that should be September 27th, 10 p.m. here on the East Coast. And I think that's when we're going to see the uh, the first real announcement and uh, presentation of these new products. Wow, that's exciting. So two drones at least. And uh, let's talk about them individually. The, the first one is the Nano. So the Nano is supposed to be the mini, very small, competing with not only DJI, but we've had two other competitors, quite frankly, with the, the Mini and the Mini category. So this will be interesting to see what's new that they might bring on. Any hint as to what may be new? Yeah, so today we also got some new photos and they show the front of the camera and basically give us some of the specs. So the Nano, as far as we know now, comes with a half inch sensor, which is really exciting, shoots 4K video, has a aperture of 2.8 and three-way obstacle avoidance and still weighs less than 250 grams. Uh, supposedly there's also going to be a second version of the Nano without obstacle avoidance, so maybe slightly lighter. Uh, we're not quite sure how much obstacle avoidance uh, is going to make a difference. I mean, if it's three ways, then as far as I know, there's going to be at least five sensors. So I would imagine that adds some weight to the drone. Um, that's for the Nano, then the light is going to come in multiple versions as well. There's one over 1.28 inch sensor with a 1.9 aperture. Uh, slightly smaller and uh, smaller sensor than the uh, the DJI Air 2S. However, this one is going to come in a second version apparently with a one-inch sensor. So it seems that that Auto is really going to uh, yeah start up the competition with uh, with DJI here on both these uh, these drones. That's that's huge. They're actually, releasing two drones at the same time. Uh, do we have an idea of well, they're they're getting announced. It looks like on that event in about a week. Any idea of production and when we might see actually those drones in the store? 
Yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, uh, in the past, we've seen that Otto would announce uh, drones and other products uh, to come to the market on certain dates, uh, only to then be delayed. Now, of course, there's been things like coronavirus, so who knows how they've uh, been impacted in the past. Hopefully, this time around, that will not be the case. Hopefully, we will not have to wait much longer. Uh, if you compare it to DJI, DJI announces a new product and basically starts selling and shipping immediately. Uh, it would be amazing for Otto to be able to pull that off as well. I'm not quite sure. I mean, uh, fingers crossed, I guess but we don't have an official shipping date or, or availability date other than just uh, September 28th in China for the official announcement. I wonder if the lighter version of the Mini is going to be something that can be Category 1 approved where they remove the sensors yeah. and maybe put prop guards on it or, or some technology. So is there any rumors on that? Uh, not as far as we know, but it makes you wonder because the, adding those sensors must add some weight to it. So I can imagine either the uh, Auto Nano with the 4K and the half inch sensor and the obstacle avoidance is still sub 250. Uh, that would be ideal. And then the other one without the obstacle avoidance may be even lighter and let's say uh, available for the, for the Japanese market, similarly to what we've seen with DJI with the, the Mini, that they still have two versions. Or, which would be the worst case scenario, if the one without obstacle avoidance is sub 250, but the one with obstacle avoidance would actually cross over and let's say be 300 grams, uh, that really would be a shame because that would put it outside of the, uh, the super lightweight uh, drone class. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. And so that's the two that we've seen in the, in the poster from uh, Hotel for the new event coming up. There's also information yeah. about the Evo 3, right? Yeah, there are, uh, let's say at this point, these are still rumors, uh, an Auto Evo 3, uh, hopefully to make it to the market uh, later this year, I think October, November, might actually coincide exactly with the launch of the, uh, the DJI Mavic 3. Uh, this one is going to come in at least four versions, apparently, with different, uh, different cameras. So one is going to have a one-inch sensor. There are rumors about one having micro four-thirds, which then, of course, brings up the question whether those lenses are going to be interchangeable. That will be amazing. Uh, not quite sure at this, uh, this point in time. There will be one with a dual camera setup that has eight, uh, 8K video recording capabilities. That will be very similar, it seems, as what we're expecting to see with the uh, DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Uh, and then there will be one that's called the SuperSense edition. And we're not quite sure if that might be even with a larger sensor or there's other uh, sensing technology on board. We're not, we're not entirely sure what that means at this point in time. Uh, all the Evo 3s are expected to come with a 360 degree or 6 what is it? Uh, all around obstacle avoidance, basically, which we don't see on the uh, lower price models. So the Evo 3 would really compete head on with, uh, with the Mavic 3, uh, it seems. Wow. It looks like we've got a, a busy fall coming up with new drones and um, a lot of testing and everything. So kind of excited. This is cool. This is competition. This is what we've been asking yeah. for for a long time, uh, getting competition to DJI and, and getting quite frankly, better products, hopefully for all of us, yeah. uh, which is, uh, which is the, the joy of having competition. Anything else we missed? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, this is really it. But uh, like you said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very interesting fall this year. And uh, if we see new products, both from Autel and from DJI, then I think a lot of people are going to be super happy. We've been waiting a long time. If you think about when the original Mavic 2 Pro was launched in uh, August 2018, uh, in, the, in the consumer tech industry, that's like decades ago by now. So I think we're all ready for some new, uh, some new products. So this is very exciting indeed. Yep, well, I agree. Haya, as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for all the insights. We'll put links down. Make sure you go to dronexcel.co to get your information. Um, I'm sure you'll be posting more. Actually, I didn't even see the article that we just talked about because you just put it two hours ago. You're, uh, you're a very busy guy. So <laughs> Haya, thanks a lot. And we'll uh, see you next week, hopefully. You're very welcome. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. The second story this week is a bit of a head scratcher, and um, this is a secret service that was caught apparently buying DJI drones. Now we know, we've been talking about this for a long time, there's a governmental ban on purchasing SUAS for the federal government, and it was a procurement record that showed up that shows that the secret service is buying Mavic 2 Pros and Phantom Force from a Florida drone supplier. Um, both of the FBI and the Secret Service, the FBI seem to have been involved as well, uh, declined to make any comments on this story. But this is very interesting because we went from DJI being uh, completely banned to 
Quite recently, the Pentagon leaking a report that said that DJI was actually safe to uh, be purchased again and safe to use. And then somebody else came back and said, no, 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 that's not the case. This was an unofficial uh, document that should not be followed. And then now we have this. So who knows, who knows what is going on, but I thought this was kind of an interesting story. Next story is a company called Fixar that is creating a black box. And this black box, if you're familiar with the concept of black box, this is a device that records everything that an aircraft does so that in case of a crash, then that data can be uh, salvaged and, and found so that an investigation can be conducted. So we know that some drones collect the data, right? But the drone has to be in pretty good shape if you want to be able to reread that data and then uh, and make sense of what happened. Now, this black box looks like it's designed with a bunch of sensors and it collects the data from the UAS in itself, including uh, autopilot functions, any control inputs that went in there. And uh, the company says that they're installing these black boxes on their computer, on their drones, sorry, because uh, they want to increase air safety, which makes sense, okay? Uh, I think this is a great idea, quite frankly. Uh, this would help us figure out when uh, a drone crashes, gives us more information. Even if the drone is completely destroyed, theoretically, the black box should be, well, somewhat surviving. Okay, the last thing this week is a Pilot Institute update. We just passed the 30,000 mark for Part 107 uh, students that we've helped get their exams. So 30,000 Part 107 students. Uh, we have a new team member, Ethan. Uh, Ethan is gonna be our producer. You'll see new content coming from us with uh, slightly different uh, camera angles and everything. Uh, Ethan is a, an amazingly creative person and we're excited to have him on board and uh, excited to see what he's gonna come up for our courses and for our YouTube channel. So look for some changes over there. Uh, we've issued 33,000 trust certificates to date. This is since the end of June, so we're pretty excited about this. A lot of people are taking the trust, learning how to fly safely. Um, if you haven't taken your trust and you're flying as a recreational flyer, make sure you hit uh, trust.pilotinstitute.com. Get your certificate. It's required by the FAA. We are authorized by the FAA to do this, and, uh, and then you'll be all legal to fly. And we just hit 110,000 students in our system. So, um, Really excited about these numbers. That's all I have for this week. As always, leave your comments and uh, tell us what you think about these new drones from Hotel. Are you interested in buying them? Uh, is this something that's on your radar? Is this something you've been waiting for? How is this gonna wait in your decision to buy either the new Mavic or if there's a new Evo coming out, uh, which are you gonna pick? So uh, what are your criteria? Let us know in the comments. That's it, I'm gonna shut up and then I'll see you guys next week.